and uh, tell me what time I need to finish up. Yeah. I'll try to. Yeah. So your question is. Seven o'clock, Jim. Oh, seven o'clock. Okay. Okay. That, I got that much time, really? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll leave time for questions. Okay, sounds good. Do you want me to do like a ten-minute house sign? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, our, um, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Joe Heckman. Uh, we had Joe earlier in the program speaking about his area of expertise, soil fertility. And uh, tonight he's going to tell us about another one of his interests, and that is uh, poultry production and his experience with right-to-farm issues. So welcome back, Joe. Okay. All right. So uh, this is a topic that I've covered a number of times for NOFA and other organizations, libraries, and so on, because I raise chickens on pasture. And um, so I'm really just speaking from experience. I, I don't really have a degree in poultry science or anything like that. But I know that it can be done, it works, and it's a very easy kind of livestock system to get into. And if you do it a certain way, like on pasture, I'm going to talk about especially raising poultry on pasture, it makes a very special kind of egg or meat bird. And that I'm an advocate for producing foods of exceptional quality, especially in the state of New Jersey, because I don't think we can easily compete um, producing commodities. But if you produce an artisanal food of special taste and quality, organic and pasture raised. Now you've got something that's special and you can charge a premium for. And so that's um, why I'm calling it, you know, producing good food. And that should be legal. So um, I put here a lot of uh, resources. I'm glad I don't have to cover this because uh, he already did a really nice uh, talk, uh, Brian did, on right to farm. Um, I got a fact sheet. Well, I should actually say my newsletter here. Pass these around, and you can find this on the web. Circulate those. So look up my newsletter, The Soil Profile. There's the web address, and it, it also tells you about how to deal with um, the manure. If you've got chickens on pasture, you normally don't have to spread manure. They um, distribute it themselves. And then, um, an, uh, so, also, I developed a special kind of a poultry pen. There's a lot of different coop designs. This book here. You can buy a whole book on chicken coops. All right. Um, fine. You can buy them, too. But I'm going to, if you, if you read my newsletter, it shows you a design that I put together. And I, I have a lot of pictures of that, too. But basically, it's a two-modular system. Um, and then um, the other thing I want to mention is, there's an organization that I joined when it started back in 2007, and it's called Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund. For $125, if you're a member of this as a farmer, you can also join as a consumer and it's at a lower fee. But anyway, what they do is they represent farmers that are doing some kind of direct marketing, and if ever they run into trouble with um, regulations and so on, uh, sometimes there's gray areas you got to deal with and so on. And if you have to hire a lawyer, that's expensive. But, um, you know, as long as you're following good agricultural practices and um, you're not breaking the law, you can get representation from an attorney and you have that up front by paying that annual fee of $125. And so I have these brochures and you can circulate that. And I like the organization. It does a little bit of uh, lobbying also for um, 
these different kinds of special high value foods. Um, there's a, a movie that kind of tells the story of the challenges of selling certain kinds of foods. Um, like the movie you could watch, Farmageddon. It's partly about raw milk, but it's, it could be about any food. Uh, people run into trouble also selling vegetables sometimes. So, and then there's this organization that I'm a member of, and I got a back issue here, and somebody can take it home with them. I'm done reading it. It's called the American Pasture Poultry Producers Association, a long acronym. So um, I'll circulate that, and, and uh, you can just look on the web, too. There's a, even if you don't become a member, I mean, there's a lot of really nice videos on the web that show how they do things. Um, and then there's other magazines here about pasture-based farming systems. I'm done reading them, and I'm giving them away if you're interested in secondhand literature. And then this book here, I took a lot of pictures out of this book. There's a lot of books on raising chickens, you know, the backyard poultry or the small-scale poultry operations. But this is my favorite, uh, the small-scale poultry flock. The pictures in this book are beautiful, and I stole a lot of pictures out of this book, which I put into my PowerPoint presentation. So let's move along. Uh, I can skip over that because um, Brian already covered all that business about right to farm. I already mentioned the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund, all right? So you have that, that brochure. Um, sometimes there are challenges to selling foods. Uh, Joel Salatin wrote a book that's really kind of, um, you know, tells you the cartoon story of it at least. It's not so funny sometimes about the uh, challenges of selling food off the farm and is illustrated there. And you can run into government regulations, who knows. And then uh, David Gumpert, he writes a popular blog, com The Complete Patient, and he wrote a book called Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Food Rights. I follow the, uh, the good food movement and uh, there's a lot of good information there. Um, so I mentioned the Pasture Poultry Producers Association. There you go. Um, highly recommend, look at their um, information. Um, here's um, why pasture is so important. You get a premium value for the egg. Okay, there's organic and then pasture is an add-on because the organic standards do not require chickens to be on pasture. It's not a ruminant and um, yet it does make a special quality egg. The organic standards only say that the chickens have to have access to the outdoors and they give them these little tiny doors and they rarely go outside anyway. It's really um, an unfortunate thing. But when you add on pasture plus organic, now you've got a special egg. And it does command a premium price. So, and the eggs actually look different. Do they look different here? I, I can't see it too well. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get a deep, dark, orangish kind of yolk. And uh, the research that's been done on this, Penn State and other places, show that it really is richer in fat-soluble vitamins. And many people, and my customers have told me this many times, that the eggs really do taste better and they could gag if they have to go back to grocery store eggs. Um, another thing that you could do to raise a premium egg, a lot of people are allergic to soy or they don't like soy for whatever reason and they want a feed source that doesn't contain any soy. A lot of times they'll substitute uh, peas in place of soy. And so here's one brand I use sometimes and uh, it's from uh, New Country Organics and, and so there's a feed label. Um, so really we're producing really special foods, direct marketing, and you know when you're selling these foods, if they come out to your farm, you're also selling the beauty of your farm too. And con contrast that to a typical grocery store, there's very little greenery there, there's nothing special about that drive. But I know that when I was raising my daughter, and she just gets so excited seeing the animals outside on pasture, and that's another benefit, just the, the psychological well-being of seeing animals outside in sunlight in a green environment. Um, so um, <laughs> for people that have too much screen time, you know, they say, okay, the new thing, hillbilly television is watching chickens, you know. It's <laughs> and they really are entertaining. I mean, really. I mean, y you're not bored when you go out and watch chickens. They, they, they do a lot of interesting things. So I mentioned that book. I like that book. Um, 
Sometimes we've gotten, uh, he comes to, to speak at NOFA too, so I'm taking some pictures out of his book, and I'm not going to go into detail of the anatomy of the chicken so much, other than to point out, it is an omnivore, and it's not a vegetarian. A lot of times people will like, like you say, wow, you know, chickens are, just had vegetarian diet and so on. That's really not so, particularly a pasture-raised chicken. I mean, they'll, they'll eat worms and bugs and all kinds of things. They're, they're really not vegetarians. They're omnivores. But they're not ruminants either. And so it's not like a cow that can live on grass alone. Um, well, anyway, now let's get chickens, all right? So we can order them through the mail. You can mail order chickens, uh, chicks. Not chickens, I should say chicks. And so they, within a few days, they arrive and at the post office, uh, you know, alert the post office in advance because you, uh, you know, you want to go th right away and, and pick them up and then, and then uh, start to care for them. And, uh, but they, they will, believe it or not, survive in, in the mail and so on. And um, here's something to keep in mind. We've got to think about food safety. Um, there's, um, you know, like the concern about, like, Children handling chickens, and you know you can get too cuddly with them, and you get exposed to salmonella. Um, and there's been some food, well, or maybe not food, but then anyway, some exposure to a pathogen. And so there's a story there about it, and uh, it's a little bit of warming, but just some common sense. But this really applies to any kind of farming operation. I mean, good hygiene taking care of things and keeping things clean and safe. And by the way, I'll just interject here. That's the whole deal about raw milk too, which came up as a subject at the very first speaker. She talked about raw milk, remember that? We've got a seminar on that tomorrow. And it's getting safer and safer because we're training farmers how to do it clean and safe. It's really, really making a difference. And it's the same thing applies there. So you're welcome to come to the seminar at 2 o'clock um, in the Marine Science Building on Wednesday. So, keep things clean and safe, uh, just common sense, wash your hands, um, you know, children really, it, another reason to get into a farm, I mean, it's great for children, they love it, and um, so this is just some pictures illustrating how to do it, so uh, when they're really baby chicks, you got to provide some additional heat. Mm -hmm. You said we, we're supposed to finish at 7? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, real quick, we're just going to flip through a bunch of pictures all right so the chicks grow up pretty quick in about about three weeks they go outdoors um, and in, in this system you can also do in winter as long as it's not extremely um, you can uh, you can keep them outdoors this is the my chicken uh, model the two modules and how I move it so the pen and the and the and the coop move separately and um, this is a feeding system I've made so that they don't waste so much feed. Chickens, you buy a commercial feeder, they waste a lot of feed. You can save money by not letting them waste seed, uh, feed. Nesting boxes, uh, shade trees, you can feed them vegetable leaves. If you got vegetables and you got call vegetables, feed that, those vegetables to the chickens. They'll eat those leaves. Um, chickens will get some of their nutrition from pasture, maybe about um, 10% of their feed from grass and, and bugs, but mostly they need feed. And feed is expensive, but on the other hand, when you're purchasing feed, consider the fact that you're getting soil fertility out of it. Um, over half the nutrients, NPK, that's in the feed, ends up on the soil as fertilizer. So, you know, you can consider that offsets. And there you see it made the grass green. And, um, but just let me finish up with a couple of more pictures now. What are you going to do about predators? What are you going to do about predators? You've got to think about this because that um, destroys a lot of small poultry operations. Well, one way is to have a dog. You can, these Grand Pyrenees dogs, they're, if they're well trained. Um, and this is a, a farmer, you can look them up, they've got a lot of nice pictures on the website called The Family Cow. It's over in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. This is how they do it. The Amish actually make these special poultry wagons. And so the chickens are on pasture, but they go in here at night and live with the dog. And then look at that little thing that brings the, um, the eggs forward. Um, got a solar panel on it. And this is Ed Shank, his farm, The Family Cow. And then, all right, that's for layers. 
Now this other system, this is about meat birds. And once again, you're moving the chickens with these, these pens and you move them each day to a new spot. The meat birds are much, much different. All right, we even feed them bugs and a lot of different, and another thing you can do, and you can look for NOFA to do this, go on pasture walks. We have one about once a year. It's a great way to go just a leisurely walk with an experienced farmer to learn how to raise animals on pasture. So go on a pasture walk and contrast that with the CAFO, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation. Interesting, um, Senator Booker is actually uh, sponsoring a bill now that wants to get farmers away from doing the CAFO operations. So we got to finish up. And so once again, pasture walk, great way to learn about how to do it. And uh, I like this <laughs> just for uh, humor. Okay, um, get a question here. What feeders do you use to help reduce waste? Well, um, I could go back to that picture. I designed one myself where the chicken, when it puts its head in that feeder, it can't just do this with its head. Like, um, like the particles it doesn't like, uh, flip them away. And, but it falls right back in the feeder. And so it's really a tray, like so big. And then um, it makes a big difference. Otherwise, chickens, the, the ones they sell like, you know, at the feed store or not, yeah, they just waste a lot of feed. You know, you'll see. And uh, there's a better way. So uh, wh what other question? Is that it? That was the question. Yeah. OK. Let's I see mean, if there's any on the chat. Oh, we got one more. OK. Urban chickens. Urban chickens. Uh, oh, yeah, good question. Because um, when I used to live in Monroe, uh, the question is, OK, um, regarding urban chickens, someone in my farm? Town. Town. OK, claims you, you can't raise chickens without attracting rats. Um, is that true? If they don't waste feed and get it on the ground and maybe, oh, there is a feeder. There's a special, I didn't design it. You can buy it though. A special feeder that when the chicken steps on this little pedal, it opens and the chicken can eat. And then uh, once the chicken walks away, it closes. And so it's rat proof. So uh, there is a way to do it. Um, so it can be done. Um, I thought the, the question really was about can you have chickens in an urban area and that's a very common question and that's why it, like we've, I, I, I've taught courses on that and then we get the, the, the town to change the ordinance after they get certified and have taken a class and so on. And I can also tell you when I was in Monroe I only had these little two acres and my neighbors never complained about my chickens but they complained about my cats and dog, you know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, you know, domesticated, completely allowed, but the chickens never a problem. Okay. So. Thanks. Go All right. Hi, Nick Clannon. Nick Clannon yeah. later in okay. life on. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, oh, the book, cow books. I thought I had the goat book. I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I could bring some copies next week if you're interested in. All this stuff. Okay. So you don't have to pop them up. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, thanks, Joe. Um, the, the reference books that uh, Joe mentioned in the beginning of his talk, uh, those are on his slide presentation. So if you go on the Annie's Project website, um, both of those uh, reference books are, are there. It has the author and uh, all that information. Uh, so our next speaker is Nick Palanin, and Nick is the chair of our Agriculture and Natural Resources Department, and he's also the agriculture agent uh, for Somerset County. 
And uh, Nick is going to talk about later in life farming. Uh, Nick's been a member of the Annie's Project team since the program was first